<laughs> Robin. I want to start by saying I've never been more tired in my life, and I blame Don Wicklin. Oh, yes, I still blame you, Don. Yes. Oh, yes, I still blame you. Yes. You're going to be puking all day today. Had a little trouble on the... Uh... A little... On the flight back, did you? A little. Now I got some, some something going on up here in my yeah. chest area. Yeah. This area right here. Why am I doing a Dane Cook? <laughs> <laughs> I want to feel like a Dane Cook with my my hand motions. This area. <laughs> How he does that. Jesus, we it's get the, it. It's the goddamn Tell the fucking like joke, will you? <laughs> uh. I like Dane Cook, though. I'm just fucking... I know, I was going to say, I'd love to criticize him, but... No, you know, I like him, but it's... You, you sell out where the friggin' Nets play. Yeah. I mean, there's really nothing I can yeah, say at that point. I understand. <laughs> it's the goddamn... The goddamn traveling is what it is. It, it uh, destroyed me. And you can call me a wimp, you can call me whatever. I don't give a shit at this point. I'm, I'm beyond tired. My time in Vegas, I'm not going to lie to you, sucked. I never caught up. I never had energy. Um, we talked about it on the show when I got out there. It took me 16 hours to get to Vegas. You had the hell ride uh, to Vegas. Which, whatever, things happen. But when you go to the airport at 5 in the morning, you assume that uh, the tickets that were booked for you are going to be there waiting for you. And when you find out at like 5, 5.15 in the morning that one of your tickets uh, was uh, canceled, yeah, that would throw you into a bit of a tizzy. Make a long story wow. short, I had, to, um, I had to take all my stuff from LaGuardia, drive. I just happened to have my car to JFK, which isn't a, a quick little ride. No. Unless it's no. the middle of the night when there's no cars on the road. Then it's a quick little ride. And then uh, I got on another flight from JFK. Had to pass Vegas where the pilot is actually going, look out the left side of, your, uh, of the plane <laughs> and you'll see Vegas. I'm like, great, that's where I have to be. If you look out of the uh, left side of the aircraft, um, you're going to see uh, where Opie wants to be right about now, but he's not going to be for another, uh, let me check, about uh, eight more hours. Yeah. Yeah. I had to fly all the way to L.A. to go back uh. to Vegas. And I had to wait in L.A. for the next plane to go back to Vegas. Make a long story short, I, I bored the listeners with this when I was in Vegas. It took me 16 hours to get to Vegas door to door, I, and it just destroyed me. Between, 16 hours? Between the uh, the time difference and all that, I just never had a rhythm out there. And I, ne I didn't have fun. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And then uh, here's the deal. Now my car is at JFK Airport, okay? So I, I talked to Don Wicklin. I'm like, Don, I need to get back to JFK Airport. And he goes, no problem. I'll take care of this, okay? So uh, we went back and forth for two or three days deciding on what flight I'm going to take on Saturday. And he assures me that if I take the, uh, the what was it, the 1220 out of Vegas to Houston, then it would be Houston to JFK. I'm like, great, all right. I'm still bummed out about how I got out to Vegas. Couldn't get right. a direct flight? That's a, that's a whole nother story. Because XM, for some reason, likes to book everything last minute. I don't get that one. but Yeah, that, that works well every single time. You hear, Bill? You couldn't get a direct flight yeah. to Vegas? Yeah, I know. That's what no, we, I know the whole That's way. what we said to these people, and they, they thought we were crazy for bringing it up, that you're crazy. No, that's what happens. Like, one time I had to go to L.A., and I was in Denver, and I had to fly to St. Louis and then go all the way to L.A. So you literally fly two hours in the wrong direction. Yeah, yeah, just to go back to where you need to be. Right. Yeah. Oh, they had us going to Utah for a while. Uh, yeah, Utah in the in the winter. That's a safe flight. So, uh, <laughs> so... And every second you're on the plane that you're passing your destination, you're just uh, sitting there going, now here's the waste of time time. This is just complete waste uh, yeah. of fucking time. Yeah. Just destination you behind just me. Jump out, parachute out of the plane. Yeah. yeah. I'm leaving my destination behind me at a few hundred miles an hour at a clip. Yeah. And every minute we're uh, going this way, and it's going to be an uh, hour. Great. And for the new listeners, they're like, what's the big deal? Shit happens. But they've been fucking up our travel since coming to XM. Like, I can't. We have a whole list of things that have happened since uh, coming to XM yeah. as far as traveling goes. So we go back and forth on the Blackberry for two days. He goes, yeah, the 1220 flight will get you to Houston, then Houston JFK, no problem. I'm like, all right, book me. I'm, I'm there. All right. So I go to the uh, airport on Saturday morning. I get there around, uh, I don't know, I, I guess uh, right around 10 a.m. or so. And I go up to the, the desk, and I'm all happy. Like, all right, at least I'm going to get home to my car, and I could, you know, drive from there. And uh, I go, uh, you know, I decide to check at that point. Yeah, so I got a continental flight for uh, Vegas to Houston and Houston to JFK. The guy looks at me like I have two heads. He goes, JFK? 
J J JFK. <sighs> There's there's not many flights uh, on Continental uh, directly to JFK. That's mm-hmm. like uh, that's very rare. I'm like you're kidding, right? I thought like now it's Anthony and the guys and Norton and everyone just fucking with me because of how awful my travel no, was to it's Vegas. Newark and LaGuardia are Continental. Yeah. big. Uh, he goes JFK. Airport. Everyone knows pretty much that, that we don't fly to JFK, or they do, but like it's very minimal. I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me, right? The terminal's out. You gotta go kind of around. You see the dumpster? Uh, go around there. <laughs> uh, let's go to Joe. He makes a good point. I'll, I'll give it to him. Joe, go ahead. I'm gonna put myself out there, Opie. You worked for four hours over five days, and probably nine days over the last two and a half weeks. Oh and no! You pitch in the morning. No, here's the deal. I'm glad we're back into a rhythm finally, because the last three weeks have been fucked up. We've been doing a show here, doing a show there, changing the schedule here. It's gonna be nice to get into that, dude. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tell you that I. We went out there to work hard. We were looking at this as a as a nice little uh, break from the action because we did work through the holidays. You yeah. know, most radio shows didn't work through the holidays, so to us it was like, yeah, do two two-hour shows and then enjoy ourselves in Vegas. What I'm trying to tell you is, I never got a chance to really enjoy Vegas because I just, I was just exhausted from the ridiculous travel. I did it for well, you. Well, I know Thank you, you. Because you didn't bite my head off, man. Punch it out. All right, Joe. No, nah, Joe makes a good point. So I'm like, it's not flying. So to make a long story short, my trip was. Um, so uh, where, where did they dump you off? Vegas, to Houston, Houston to LaGuardia. Now I have to go. Now after flying all day, I have to get my car at JFK. So you had to drive from Laguardia, LaGuardia in a taxi cab. Fly. Well, <laughs> take a cab from Laguardia to going? JFK. Manhattan. No, Why? see what see what happened at that point. A real man took over the situation, and Eric Logan made sure I had a car at Laguardia. Oh, oh, like a real man, like figured out there was a problem, and then because I'm... you called him up and made such a pleasant phone call. Oh to yeah, him, no, sure. Eric Logan is just as pissed off as I am. So oh, okay. it, see, because I told the guys around here, I'm not stupid. I know I get a reputation for being an asshole, but uh, this one, no way. No one's blaming me for being an asshole. Eric Logan was beyond pissed too, and and because he's a real man, he took care of the situation. And a man in my yeah. position can't afford to be made to look ridiculous. All right, <laughs> Don Wicklin, I'm on the plane. Now pissed off that I'm going to LaGuardia, right? And I get uh, I get a phone call and I get a, a email on my BlackBerry. He, as they're closing the the, the doors on the plane, he uh, announces that he now found me a flight from Houston to JFK. I'm like, and then the the stewardess is looking at me, going, "What? It's imp- it's it's not feasible to get your bags off this uh, yeah, plane. Yeah, the connection and time. And there's no way we could guarantee oh. that your bags will make it to JFK. I'm like, holy shit, he's making it even worse. So I got that's when I got on the phone with Eric Logan. I go, will you tell this fucking asshole to stop? We have to uh, stop. We have Elo talking with uh, Don right here. You can act like a man. What's the matter with you? I didn't think it had to get physical like that. So it, apparently he slapped him in the face. Uh, so at that point, Eric Logan took over because that's what real men do, and uh, and he got me a car, like Holy literally shit. his private driver. So when I got off the plane, there was a there was a ride waiting for me because I mentioned this because you you mentioned the cab line. Mm-hmm. Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! If they didn't have a car for me after this fiasco and I had to wait in that cab line, oh, it yeah. went on for days. And those people are like, this sucks, but they're getting a ride to their homes. I would have had to wait on that cab line just to go to another airport to get my fucking car. <laughs> so it added about an hour and a half on to my fine travel. Uh, I wish I had the audio of you muttering to yourself going to the oh, airport. Oh, sons of bitches. Sucking motherfuckers. Motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Knocking over kids. Oh, it's just angry. You just get angry. You wish you had the voice. Well, here, I'll, I'll. This is fun when we get to let everyone in on some stuff. Let's see here. That happened to me when I was coming back from uh, Livonia, Michigan. Ah, New Year's for, in uh, Livonia for New Year's. Yeah. I go to go. I'm, uh, you know, going and checking for my flight to fly back, and I walk up, and uh, you know, there's like 600 people in line trying to fly back. Uh huh. So I'm like, I know what I do. I'll just go out to the uh, sky cap, toss a guy five bucks. And I'll be in and out. And I, I show up, and my 10 o'clock flight has been canceled. And the next one out is like, uh, I think it was like 3 in the afternoon. Oh, what wow. are you So I'm sitting there trying to, okay, I'm going to stay, be, be in a good mood. So they go, okay, it, they took my bag, give me a voucher. I go in there to check with the lady about the voucher. She goes, well, you want to get on? There's another 10 o'clock to go to JFK. And I'm like, okay, but I just 
check my bag out on the curb. Can I go get that? And she's like, no, you can't. It, no. It's too late. Yeah. You no, now have to no. sit here for five yeah. hours. Yeah. No, that bag is gone, <laughs> yeah. sir. The stewards looked at me like, what? Oh, you're changing <laughs> flights as we're cha- you know, closing the door? And, and oh, she's yeah. like, I can't personally take your baggage off. You have to go back to the agent, you know, out, you know, in the terminal. Yeah. So, because you you said you wish you could read my mind. Well, here you go. Here's a communique that was sent to Eric Logan, who I I love dearly, who has really uh, made us big stars at uh, XM. Was this the one that was CC to everybody? Everybody. <laughs> Everybody, I'm. Sur- Did you get this bill? Because I think I you got to see- share no. the fun with every employee. Well, out of Travis, the CC loop. It, Travis got this one. It was sent to Eric Logan. Yes, lowly, lowly Travis got this one. It was sent to Eric Logan, Anthony, Don Wicklin, Jim Norton, Ben, Sam got Steve. It. <laughs> it goes on and on, and this is exactly what I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take this shit anymore. I'm done as far as traveling for XM goes. Don't even approach me with travel plans for anything. The unprofessionalism and incompetence is fucking mind-boggling. Please read the email that was sent by Don below carefully. It says I'm all set to fly into JFK where my car is. Guess what? I'm flying to fucking LaGuardia. Meaning after flying all day, I have to take a cab to another airport to get my car. What's the airport code for fucking LaGuardia? Uh, F-L-G-A. F-L-G-A. I've flown into LaGuardia before. I hear fucking LaGuardia is really a bitch, though, to uh, get out of. (laughs) Meaning after flying all day, I have to take a cab to another airport to get my car. Also, our seats are not together, which is minor, and I I acknowledge that. But, Don, why would you say they were... Uh, they were next to each other when obviously they're not. So he didn't even check on the flight, and and he'll he'll go to his grave saying he did. But you didn't because, you know what? They just happened to change the seats. You see him 80 years old, laying in a hospital bed. I did book that flight correctly. <laughs> He's going to his grave. I will never say that. <laughs> Rosebud. I, uh, <laughs> You joke? It's the travel agency's fault. You joke? I will I will haunt him <laughs> until he either gets it right or yeah. quits. Really? That's his only options, Look but I will be Obi's haunting him. thumbs there. are still bruised from typing that text message with all that anger. Well, my Blackberry's fucked up uh, thanks to the <laughs> fine folks at Circuit City who are pouring uh, Red Bull and vodkas all over it. Oops. It's another story. We uh, had a fine party in Vegas the last night. Great guys say, in Circuit City. Been, there were a lot of parties of going on. What, alcohol, yeah, right? there were all kinds of like the AVN Awards thing, thing was going on. The yeah. adult video news uh, thing was going on. So Jimmy and Keith the cop are going to these parties. I'm getting invites to go to these porn parties, and then someone went and comes back, and and you hear. It sucked. It was like a room full of people. Like it could have been just anyone's dopey party that you walk into and don't know anyone. <laughs> yeah. Like you expect a porno party, it's gonna be naked girls and dildos and shit like yeah, that flying across the room. No, it's just guys standing around. Yeah, well, you know, video sales were up three percent this uh, year. Uh, we're hoping next quarter is gonna be a little bit. Be- <laughs> this is a porno party. Where's the dildo? Yeah, where's, where's the-, the hedgehog doing some ass fucking? Yeah, where's the double dongs? <laughs> All right, so. Um- the seats weren't together, but Don, why would you say they were when obviously they're not? This really makes me feel like an important part of the team. This is just another error on a long list of travel fuck-ups since coming to XM. Why do I have to personally suffer because people don't like Kenny? I can't think of anything like this happening when Kenny's involved. Didn't. As, it never happened. Never. Uh, as Well, Kenny was a road manager for 18 years. Yeah. But they want to ignore that for some reason. As far as the trip coming to Vegas, I would have never made it to the airport with the initial fuck-up because Kenny would have checked our flights early in the morning of our travel. No doubt in my mind, he would have caught the error. That's the fucking difference. I cannot express how pissed off I am right now. Don, I don't want to hear shit as far as this fuck-up goes. Do not call me. Eric, we have a real problem, and we need to take an er- uh, and we need to talk early next week. Uh-oh. So, Don, just in case you thought I calmed down the last two days, absolutely fucking not. And here's how much I care about Opie, because uh, I stayed in Vegas an extra day. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm in Vegas. I, Were you thinking about him as you were I lounging checked, at the pool? I checked my email from he my room. About me in five years. From my suite. Who are you I kidding? checked my email, and I saw Opie's uh, email, very upset, very disturbed. So I Eating immediately... one of those mints off your pillow? Yes, yes, one of the mints. <laughs> I immediately fired off uh, an email to uh, Wicklin and said, 
how does this affect my flight back? <laughs> I want to make sure this doesn't happen to me. I got to start thinking about me more. It's all about me. Well, I'm going to start doing me, me, me. I am in the, um, the me phase of life. It's so easy to do I me, me, me. I don't care. I could give a flying fuck about anyone else. Now, it's all about me, how I can be convenienced, my things, uh, what I do, what I have to do, things like that. I spent too many years just <clears throat> being yes man. Yes man to everybody. What, uh, all right, sure thing. I'm on it. Was that like back in like the 30s? Way back. Oh, yeah, in the 30s. Yeah, yeah. You were in high school? That was it. Sure. Me, Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> Albert Einstein. I was always grabbing them beakers or whatever yeah, you needed. Spoke? It's your graduation. Who was the guest speaker? Oh, the guest speaker? Yeah. Clark Gable. Oh, was it? Yeah. Came in to talk about a little about drama. Teen heartthrob. No, he did. Teen heartthrob Clark, Clark Gable. Gable. How could you grow this mustache? All right, so there's the deal. And now I got some kind of respiratory thing happening, which is Because you're on the plane, because the plane is nothing but a flying Petri dish. I was going to guess Grover Cleveland. Grover, Grover Cleveland yeah. would have been a good one. With that wacky so They face tried hair. to get him. Yeah. <laughs> I had a great day in Vegas after all was said and done. Uh, very hard to catch up on the sleep thing, like you said, with the long flight and everything. But once I was in it, uh, Keith the cop even was like, you know, he kept coming up to my poker chair my chair at hold him and gone uh you you gotta go to bed you got i i get crazy it's a good thing that the closest casino is uh atlantic city or mohegan yeah. you got it's an you really, effort you really gotta quit to get there it's not a quick like 20 minute drive you know to a casino because if it was i could see me having a problem i uh i went i guess it was uh saturday saturday friday friday uh right after the show Went up, had something to eat. Uh, Friday night, I was at the hold'em table uh, from, I believe, um, probably eight o'clock at night after dinner. So I, I, I ate. I did not leave that seat. An occasional piss. Same table until five in the morning, <laughs> from eight at night. Till five in the morning. Wow. That was just day one. And then uh, Saturday night, it was from, I think, uh, sometime in the early evening until um, about 1.30. But I had to get up at 4 for the flight. So I left the casino at 1.30. That's when Keith came up and was like, uh, the, I'm going to be uh, picking you guys up at like 5. <laughs> Jesus. So... That's one of those things you sit there going, okay, here. if I go to bed now, I'll get six hours. Oh. If I go to bed now, I'll get four hours. You know what? I'll just stay up. I'll sleep on the plane. I was, that's what I said. I'm looking at my watch every minute, just going, all right, a little long. And I'd set a goal for myself and go, all right, dude, by 11. 11 o'clock, I'm back in the room. And then 11 rolls around, and you're like, I'm kind of on a roll here. I'm just going to keep playing 11.30. Second I start losing... And that yeah, second I start, I'm not gonna drop money here now. The second I start losing, I'm out. And and you look at your watch, and casino time blows by so fast uh, that you know you look, and another hour goes by. No. So you got to make a new goal for yourself. You don't even go to, you don't even get sleepy. You like that chick from the ring. You're just sitting there, the clocks move. Actually, they, there's no clocks no, there, is no, there? No clocks, no, no clocks windows. In a casino. No Phil. concept of Jesus. time whatsoever. And he's just sitting there with his hair in his yeah. face like that chick who crawls out of the well. Just, just yeah. <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> I just sit there. They want you. They don't want you to know what time it is or anything. Oh, it's yeah. all set up. The, the temperature, it, they, they've worked out the temperature where it's perfect temperature to keep you awake and wanting to stay there, the colors they pick. It's I've not, seen these casino shows on Discovery and stuff. It's not a it, the casino was a little cold actually, didn't you think? But it's supposed to be just to keep you awake. If you're if you're a little warm, you get a little drowsy. They don't want drowsy. They oh, want yeah. you staying awake and gambling. The color scheme is set up in a way where they've actually done studies where certain color 
combinations keep you awake and make you want to stay there, and they're pleasing to the eye. I saw a show on uh, Vegas and casinos. You know these fucking bastards also uh, uh, lay the rugs down in a way, so if you drop a chip, it's really hard to find it. <laughs> the cu- if you notice. Is that the reason for those? Uh, they have the ugliest Dude, carpet. I Look saw at the a color. show. They basically have rugs that will blend into the, the chips. The color of the carpet will always match the color of the bigger money chips. Right. So, like if it's a purple, black, uh, green combination on there, there's this purple, black, green carpet to make that's it harder very, for you to find your chip. Very, the colors are very intertwined in pattern. They're not big like squares or anything. They're very small uh, uh, color combinations of the same color as the chip. So if you drop a chip, it falls down and... Uh, Later on, I guess the cleaning crew is known to to have to give these things back. You're not leaving with it. They have to give it <laughs> uh, back. I would I would gather they cannot just leave with a. a I always the, wonder why those rugs chip. were so just so brutally ugly. They are brutal like that, so that chips will get lost on them. And and I'm sure they have they probably have people whose job it is is to walk around the casino. Maybe they have another job, but part of it is to look down and look for chips on the floor and yeah. just pick them up. And there's probably millions in revenue per year yeah, you gotta think that they get just in lost chips. you got to think people are dropping a lot of chips Yeah, in, in, the, in that situation. You've seen some drunks. They're drunk. Sh- and the chip pile goes flying. They pick up a few. Yeah. All right, let's uh, move on to the phones. Keith in Jersey. Keith, what's up? Well, I initially just had one short comment, which was, OB, travel diva. Travel do guys, diva. Do you guys realize that when somebody screws up like this and OB comes in all pissed off, it makes for the best goddamn radio. He's hysterical when he's pissed. Well, uh, maybe they do it. it on purpose. Thank you, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's probably it. They do it on purpose. I'm going to be listening to this on a replay all goddamn day. All right, thanks there, uh, Keith. Thanks, all right. Um, speaking of pissed off, Eric found... You and I talking about XM Satellite Radio when we were on commercial radio? This is classic. This is priceless. We'll do it after the break. And it shows the insight that your pals Opie and Anthony well, have. We like to say uh, as many times as we can that we're brilliant broadcasters. Brilliant. We, we don't just say that we're brilliant broadcasters. We prove it to you. Back it up. We back it up. We saw the future before anyone did. We saw the future of this and f- and saw the threat in it to terrestrial radio. You're damn right. I'm just seeing, uh, uh, are we going to continue with the casino thing? No. Okay. Well, you want to do it now or you want to take a break? Uh, you know, that ain't my fucking job. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You're, you're the point said guard. it's about me. I said it's about me. I don't uh, do that. You don't want me to figure start, it out. You don't want me to start doing a me, me, me show, dude. <laughs> Trust me. It, you sound real cocky, but if you want me to play, sound real cocky. If you want me to play the me, me, me game, trust me. Ooh, I thought oh, this, this was little a Texas show. Hold'em trust here. me. This is a little Texas Hold'em here, huh? He just raised you. What are you gonna say about that, huh? He just raised me. I uh, let me look at my hand. I'm it's buy, all cute, me, me, I'm me. I'm buying like, a house. I'm gonna fold. Uh, I gotta buy a house. No drama. I need this job. All right, we'll take a so quick break. You guys break. have a nice argument. I thought we were gonna play it. Nah, we'll take a break. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking take a break. <laughs> Trust me, we'll take a break. Thanks, Don, for putting me in a great mood today. I really appreciate it. You're doing a great job for us. It's wonderful. Rob, bitch, Rob, bitch, bitch, Rob, bitch, 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 bitch,